HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Hillers golf team presents the TVL Championship Trophy. Sculptor Jeff Picaccio prepared the spirit of the marathon sculpture for the 2016 Boston Marathon. The seniors powder puff team of 2016 gets ready for the annual game against the juniors and Courtney will let you know everything coming up on HCAM with our HCAM Insider. But first, the Hopkinton Center for the Arts hosted their Lights Up opening night to officially welcome their new additions and to thank everyone who has supported and helped with the project. HCAM's Jim Cousins was on the scene to catch up with some of the guests for the very special night at the HCA. Obviously, this is a very big moment and a very big night in the life of the HCA. Did you think you was ever going to get here? Yes, I did. And I have to say, because there were just so many people that believed in this. And, you know, when you kept, I kept hearing it over and over again, and Chris Waldman and I kept hearing from other people that this was a good idea. So we said, you know, one day we'll get there. <laughs> I didn't know when that day would be, but. Um, it's here today and it's been uh, a, a culmination of a dream of a lot of people. I'm really happy. Can you tell me about when this vision started to actually take place and form? Yeah, uh, well I'll tell you that, you know, certainly 20, 25 years ago with Dora Garab Garabedian, she really was the first person to have the vision for an art center in Hopkinton and got this started and then there were so many people that came after her at the CAA and then uh, Myself and, and many other people with Enter Stage Left Theater started about 30 years ago in high school and saying we want a place to be able to call it ours and our theater and our home. And so really those two simultaneous visions came together four years ago and it really was with the boost of the Hopkins Community Endowment that really gave us the energy and the momentum to uh, bring on the fundraising piece to make this creative dream come true. And then really honestly, in those four years, um, it was just the last year and a half, I think, has just totally taken off. And, you know, the more the dream and the idea spread, it took off, and here we are. So, Scott, you've been involved with this literally from day one. Yes. Can you speak to where it started and how the plans changed and how you're feeling about how it ended up? Sure, sure. Well, actually, our firm has been involved in this project for well over 15 years from when it started just with a concept, an idea, to the several phases of construction on the barn renovation, the addition, and then obviously now the final phase of completion for the performance center. And uh, you know, it's gone through some iterations and uh, a lot of different uh, input, but certainly the, in, the focus has always been to, pro to provide the best space possible for performance, for music, for theater, for dance, and I think we've accomplished that. Uh, I'm actually performing tonight with a group, um, and I've performed in different uh, musicals before with, with this theater, um, and I've met a lot of great friends here, great people, everyone's super supportive, and it's a great community, and I'm hoping that we raise a lot of money tonight. <laughs> Why are you here tonight? I'm here to commemorate the uh, alteration of this barn to a beautiful cultural facility for the future of Hopkinton. You've been involved in this process, helping out, donating materials here and there. Um, what's your impressions of how it turned out? It turned out really nice. It is much better than I ever would have imagined. You know, and it's also you know a space that many different things are going to be happening in here, whether they be um, you know. Um, 
events where maybe they're hosting something or they're doing a play or many different types of things. What types of things do you think that you'll be excited about happening here in our community? Oh, I think it'll be good that a place that people can go and it'll be, I would hope there'd be weddings here and different things. I think there'll be, it's a, it's a good spot for a lot of things, you know. I think besides cultural arts and all that, there's a lot of things. And you got the outside, it's beautiful. Uh, hi, Mom. I, um, I actually perform with this group of people a lot. These are all my friends and my, um, my neighbors, and I'm so excited to see this whole dream of very close friends of mine coming to fruition, and it's very exciting for all of us, so it's been nice. Well, I'm here to support my wife, who's a wonderful glass artist, a member of the Hopkinton HCA committee, and we're supporters of the HCA. Um, I'm here because I've been part of Enter Stage Left since 2006 and things are finally being built and actually we are part of the show coming up later tonight. I'm wondering what your impressions are of this facility. The facility is fantastic. So I just took a quick tour uh, to see the renovations here in this room that are uh, the progress that's been made and, and I think a little bit ways to go to see the function room upstairs, the, uh, the studios and the, uh, the, the classrooms and the common space that can be used upstairs in the loft really is spectacular and it's an incredible community asset that I think really will bring arts and culture to the suburbs in a, in a really unique way. So kudos to the community for, for being able to pull this together and the vision behind it. You can see the full broadcast from the Hopkinton Center for the Arts Lights Up Opening Night airing very soon on HCAM and on our website hcam.tv as well as our YouTube page. Preparations are already underway for the 2016 Boston Marathon and one of those preparations is the restoration of Miko Kaufman's Spirit of the Marathon sculpture. It's next door to Weston Nurseries. The restorer of the town common fountain, Jeff Boccaccio, was once again back in Hopkinton to work on the project. So this is a sculpture by Miko Kaufman. Um, and um, we were commissioned to remove all the copper sulfates off, copper sulfates off the surface. Uh, we do that with a process of uh, blasting the surface with walnut shells and a mixture of sand. Uh, once we remove all the copper sulfates, we clean the bronze, uh, and then we start the process of re-patina. Patina is the process of actually heating the metal and using, using various um, combinations of chemicals to treat the metal and develop the desired uh, patina. Uh, in this case, we're doing a liver of sulfur. Uh, we'll do a rub out and bring some highlights back through the liver of sulfur, and then we'll do a ferric nitrate on top of that. Once those two processes are done, we neutralize the patina with a little bit of water, let that dry, and then we do three copious coats of Incrilac. Incrilac is the uh, recommended protectant for any and all exterior metals. Um, once the Incrilac is all dry, we go in with three um, copious coats of a carnauba base wax. The wax protects the Incrilac, the Incrilac protects the patina and the bronze. And this should be an annual maintenance program with all exterior um, work such as this. Now do you do a lot of work uh, with statues like this? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, this is, you know, spring and summer is our real busy season. We spend a lot of time out of the studio. We're a traditional sculpture studio, so we do a lot of commission work as well. But spring and summer, we're outside either restoring or maintaining our own works, as well as other artists' works, as well as, um, you know, they might be architectural things, architectural embellishments on the sides of buildings that have long fallen off. We'll re recreate those in the studio and then um, put them back in place on the side of a building or, so, or something of that nature. Now time-wise, how long does this uh, whole process take as far as time? So this one will take maybe three days. It's going pretty well actually right now. The bronze is cleaning up pretty well. It's a fairly new statue, so that's why the, um, the surface is cleaning up pretty quickly. And when they're a little bit older, sometimes the, sometimes the surface is a little more uh, resistant you know, there's a, you know, there might be 80 years of copper sulfates built up and dirt and grime. So, but yeah, this is going pretty quick. And this uh, warm November weather must help a little bit, huh? Uh, it does. Um, 
but uh, the yeah so yes to answer your question yes but it's also kind of awakened some of the clients to um, have stuff done that we thought we were going to be doing in the spring of next year so we're kind of like running around trying to squeeze in some pro like this one and we have one in Northbridge now that we're going to try and squeeze in before we lose this weather so well keeping busy is always a good thing right absolutely all right now you also worked on the fountain uh, it looks incredible uh, they got the flowers planted around it everybody loved it for the 300th anniversary uh, do you look at that fountain set and you're just proud of it because it it looks so amazing yeah it, it was you know what I really enjoyed about it was seeing everybody's you know reaction and you know everybody was really happy to have a piece of their history back so doing a project like that is always really satisfying because you know you're, you're taking something that was you know kind of forgotten about for a really long time bringing it in the studio you're resurrecting it and you're giving it back to a community and so that's a really yeah it is very very rewarding job to do Coming up next on HCAM News, the Hillers Seniors Powder Puff football team gets ready to do battle with the juniors. The Hillers golf team presents the TVL Championship trophy, and Courtney will have our HCAM insider. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here, and we have greyhounds. We also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a ring. Welcome back to HCAM News. Every year on the Friday before the Thanksgiving varsity football game between Hopkinton and Ashland, ladies of the junior and senior classes at Hopkinton High School do battle in a fun game of flag football to raise funds for their class. After playing a very close game last year, this year's seniors are looking for not just a win, but they hope to dominate. Eagle wide receiver. Anabolic offensive line. Michelle Lisette wide receiver. Uh, Bridget Marquard on D line. Emily Marculitis running back. Jen DePatty offensive line. <laughs> Kayla Patrick safety. Uh, Katie Curry D line. Kylie Zayards D line. Casey Palmer cornerback. Emma Zach D line. I'm Gabby Lockett and I'm a wide receiver. And I'm Elise Carlson and I'm also oh, a wide receiver. Alright, I'm Erin Murphy. I'm a tight end. I'm Amanda Celia, I'm a defensive lineman. I'm Sophia P and I'm an offensive lineman. I'm Julia Kraft and I'm O-line. I'm Carolyn Coffey and I'm defensive line. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chloe Jamari and I'm a linebacker. Hi, I'm Isabel Holden and I'm a safety. Hi, I'm Azalee Curl and I'm an, also an outside linebacker. Sarah Birchman, tight end. Allie Rodman, running back. We've been practicing very hard. Yep, we've been practicing outside. Outside every Unlike day. some people we know. <laughs> <laughs> Now, are you ready uh, for this game coming up? Yes. All I got to say is it might get a little bloody. Yep. We're what? leaving it all on the field. Yeah. All right, uh, you have any uh, score predictions? Um, probably like... 200 to zero. Yeah. <laughs> zero. There's going to be a zero. No score for the juniors. Not us. Not us. Not us. Nope. Nope. Not really like, they're kind of scared of us, I think. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of us. I would yeah. really, I'd say, yeah, I'd say we're pretty ready. We're pretty intense with the juniors, so. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Now, I know the junior team, they almost won last year. So you guys oh, yeah. We did win last yeah. year. We did. Undefeated. We did a couple of us are actually being recruited for the NFL. We're, yeah. ho we're hoping to get the back-to-back -back championship title. Yeah. Oh, we will. We will get it. It's, it's not really a question, yeah. but we'll be there. Undefeated. Yeah. Trophies. Yeah. You know. 
No big deal. So yeah. you got like a big playbook with all kinds of complicated formations. Playbooks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my god. We, all we, we all sleep with playbooks in here. We sleep with playbooks here. here. Just here. Like, yeah. It's all from the heart. And breathe. You know, we're having fun. It's from the heart. That's all that matters. They're not even going to see their end zone. Woo! Not even a little bit. Good not one. even a little bit. I was going to say a lot to a little, but I like that one better. Yeah. Yep, please. Yeah. Side. All right. Uh, you have any favorite drills you like doing in practice? Um, Chew nails Daddy. for breakfast. We Step on each other's throats. We run barefoot. I'm getting summoned by my coach because yeah. I'm the all-star. We got to go. Right. Oh, yes. We've been every out day. here every single weekend, once or twice. Like the rain, the rain snow, snow. Uh, has really snow. gave us the privilege to come out here during our studies. <laughs> we work hard, we work hard. Excellent. Juniors practice inside, so that's yes. it's weak. It's weak. They don't even know what's coming. I mean, they practice inside and we're out here in the freezing cold, so mm -hmm. every every weekend, every day. Mornings, <laughs> mornings, yeah. nights, every day. We actually, we camp out here a couple nights a week. We don't go to school, we just practice. We just practice every day, all day. Um, we're, we've been practicing hard, but I would say that our biggest asset is going to be that we're prettier. Yeah. yeah. All right. Have you been uh, working on any uh, top secret plays or anything like oh, that? Oh yeah. Nope. You don't have to wait. Um, no. <laughs> we got we got no. a few. We got some stuff off our sleeves. Yeah. You'll yeah. never know. Our mm -hmm. sleeves are full. Fully sleeves, loaded. Sleeves are full, full and ready to. Loaded. Yep. We're ready to load. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Greco and Franchock really know how to coach us and lead us as players and people, and we're, they've been doing a great job. Yeah. Uh, just be prepared to, uh, yeah, be scared. Don't yeah. underestimate us. Don't yeah, don't it. Yep. Alright, is there any uh, specific drills you've been working on? Weightlifting. A lot yep. of up downs. Up downs. Yeah, we do it in the rain. Um, those in the rain. Firefight. Yeah, we do the, the fire. Oh, fire. Jumping yeah. over fire. Yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> we set some fire because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're on fire. Yeah, yeah. we are the fire. 24 7. All week, all month, all year. I mean, we've just practiced. I feel like we practice all the time. Every season is powder puff season. It's true. There's no off season. No off season. So, this has pretty much been like the number one priority in your life. Number one priority. 100%. It's the reason why I get up at 8 30 every weekend morning. Not it's even worth 8 it. It's like 6. True, it's in 6. It's freezing it's cold. Six. It's chilly out here. I mean, last year we came in the snow. The weather doesn't deter us. We're and the juniors, here. the juniors practice inside because they're wimps. <laughs> Do you have any uh, message for the juniors? Watch your back. We're coming for you. I mean, we want that back-to-back -back title and we're ready to claim it. If this year's game is anything like last year's, it will certainly be a can't-miss experience. We will have highlights of the flag football throwdown on next week's HCAM News. The Hopkinton Hillers golf team is losing 11 seniors after this year. For most of the seniors on this year's squad, they got the chance to win their third straight TVL championship. The captains of the team, along with head coach Dick Bliss, got the chance to hoist up this year's TVL championship trophy. If anybody wants to take a picture with the boys, here it is. Tri-Valley League champions, the three of them. At the end of the season golf banquet, Coach Bliss and the senior captains hoisted up the TVL championship trophy and many awards were given out to members of the team after an incredible 17 and one season. So, word to the wise, it's a privilege to play on this golf team and be in this program. It's, it's earned by you, by the numbers you shoot in your tryouts and by how, how much you play and so forth. So next year, it's a whole new slate again. We lose 11 gifted players, really gifted players, three All-Stars plus. So it's wide open, but there's a freshman group that's coming up. Right, Dylan? Got some players down there? Yeah, that are willing to really step up and make their mark, all right? So you gotta play, and I'll mention that more than once. You gotta play, there's plenty of people here that are members, a lot of you joined over Westboro. I saw you over there at Westboro all the time. Some of you going up to Maine in camps and playing up there. So there's a lot of commitment that has to be done to stay at the level we're at. And it's a very, very high level where the expectations are really high. <laughs> Abby stepped right in and has stepped in with 29 other gentlemen, which I made sure they were all throughout the season. 
And we had a lot of volunteers who were always willing to help Abby in any way they could. And they were very nice to her. And Abby handled herself unbelievably. The Jay family, you have quite a young lady here. All right? And uh, she was recognized uh, making the varsity team right away. She played with coach in the tournament right away, and she said, oh boy, where do you get, where do you see Abby hit it? And sure enough, when she ran into tryout, she was shooting in the low 40s right away. So she had no problem making the varsity team right away and played in almost all varsity. And coach told her once in a while for a JV match too, so that kind of helped him out also. Also, the kids voted on the rookie of the year, and you were uh, pretty dominant in the voting. In fact, almost every kid voted for you as our Rookie of the Year this year. So we have a trophy for that. So, congratulations, Abby. Great first year. Along with Kyle Slick, your wonderful other 29 teammates also voted you one of the most improved players this year. Congratulations. He used to average like 44, 45, and his average this year is around 40, 41. So that's, that's a very, very big improvement. Was voted by the coaches, and almost pretty unanimously too. And there are some great players in this league. Uh, he was the MVP of this league, and, and you get this big trophy, it has some great names on this trophy. Herbal's on there for a couple of years, as you know. I, I know one of your goals was to follow in his footsteps, and you've done that. There's a guy named John Curran's on there like three years. Keegan's not on there. He was only here one year and John beat him up. So Kim just Kim uh, Donovan's on there three years. So we've had some hillers that have been the best players in the league. And Jeff, you were truly one of those this year, as voted by the coaches in the league, the MVP, and you are the MVP of our team also. Jeff Fox. That's going to stay with you for a year, and then you're going to present it back to us. And maybe one of our junior hillers might get their name on it next year. I don't know. They're going to have to work real hard. But uh, Jeff, tremendous, tremendous. They're all yours. Mom and Dad, you may need a truck to take all this stuff home. <laughs> Some of the captains, along with Coach Bliss, presented athletic director Eric Cargill with the TVL Championship Trophy. Uh, the golf team had another great year. This is uh, three in a row. Um, this year they had to kind of really work for it as they had to came down to the last match of the season and they came through on their home course. So it's a tremendous program, tremendous student athletes. Um, just another terrific year. Coach Bliss does a great job every year and every year we're kind of in this boat where they're going for TVL titles and the last three years they've won three in a row. So we're real proud of the players and the job Coach Bliss does with our team. <laughs> Yeah, how did, how did it feel uh, presenting the trophy today? You must feel really proud about what you guys accomplished this season. Yeah, it was a great season. Um, we are we're proud of it for sure. Three years in a row, it's a pretty good accomplishment. Um, we worked really hard. Coach Bliss definitely led us to these three titles for sure. I'm just very proud of these three young men. I've had the pleasure of coaching them for four years, and uh, they've made their mark on hopping in golf, as many players before them have, and they've carried on the legacy of uh, winning winning TVL championships and playing great golf and they represented the school and the community very well. It's been a great year. All right, and uh, I hear you're excited to be back for next year. I sure well. am. I'm, we're going to miss 11 seniors. That are, that's the most seniors we've ever had on our team. But we've got a lot of young kids coming up and uh, these guys have been great role, role models to those young kids. So I think the, the tradition will continue on. On another sports note, be sure to catch this year's Hillers Volleyball Playoff Run airing on HCAM and also available on our website. Unfortunately, their season came to an end last week after a tough battle on the road against Westboro. The Hillers Volleyball team ends an incredible season with a record of 15-5. For more about what you can expect on the HCAM channels, here is Courtney with our HCAM Insider. 
Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, November 20th at 8pm, Barbara Kessler discusses her music career and her career selling jewelry on Hopkinton Coffee Break. It's a very interesting position, like being the ice cream truck driver. In a way, I think it kind of prepared me for performing or something. <laughs> you know, because you've got these lines of, of people mm -hmm. and they're you know, they're, they're there for your, your product. On Saturday, November 21st at 1.30 p.m., the volleyball quarterfinal game against Medfield will air. And at 3 p.m., the semifinal game against Westboro will air. On Monday, November 23rd at 7 p.m., Wake Up and Smell the Poetry audience members take the stage to share their poems, stories, and songs. I am not one for marking time these days, but this work could be only hours old. How long would I need to stay to see beaver teeth scraping, gnawing a living? At 7.30 p.m., Edward O'Leary shares stories of his time in the Army on a new Veterans Remember. I was a platoon leader in the Mortar Battery, and uh, we spent most of the time getting ready. Uh, we were on maneuvers just about all the time. Every week it was three, four nights out in the boondocks. Yeah. On Wednesday, November 25th at 11 a.m., the Hopkinton Center for the Arts Lights Up Celebration will air. On Thursday, November 26th at 11.30 a.m., the Hopkinton High School Junior and Senior Girls meet on the field for Powder Puff football. At 1 p.m., Hopkinton and Ashland take to the field to celebrate the day with the 92nd annual Thanksgiving Day Classic Football Game. If you want to know when all of this HCAM programming and more will air, Visit hcam.tv slash newsupdates to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. You can also sign up for our daily news updates to learn about the latest and greatest from Hopkinton. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, we thank you for watching.